uh, as part of our celebration of 175 plus years of Lafayette history. Uh, we have been hearing uh, the first meeting of each month, and now it'll be the, the second meeting in February uh, from Mary McCosker, president of the Lafayette Historical Society. So I will turn the meeting over to Mary. Welcome, Mary. Well, I'm back to give it a try again. <laughs> Thanks for inviting me. <clears throat> okay. Okay, can you see it? Yes. Yes, but we're seeing your uh, notes and the other slides. Is it possible to go to? I can. Yeah, I can. I can. Uh, I can take them away. Maybe. <laughs> What do you see now, folks? <laughs> yes, oh, there now it goes. you got it. Oh, nope. you were just there. You well, it, but okay. why, why don't you go ahead? We can see the main slide in the middle of the screen. Okay. That's... Now, is that any better? Or are you still seeing my notes? I don't see the notes. We see okay. the next slides on the left. Uh, but okay. the say main slide is, is large in the middle. So all right. Well, just say a prayer here. Here we go. <laughs> So rancho is a Spanish word that has many meanings, but most refer to a place where people gather. During the Spanish and Mexican periods in the Americas, it became associated with a place for raising cattle and other livestock. In Spanish and Mexican California, a rancho was a cattle farm. In the late 1700s, Spanish explorers had come to the Americas and claim land for the kings and queens of Spain, land which belonged to the native people. The Spanish established missions, presidios or forts, towns and ranchos, which were built and run with native Indian labor. The Spanish wished to eliminate what they saw as heathenism among the native people, replacing it with Catholicism. The natives were baptized at the missions, in the years between 1769 and 1834, 81,000 natives were baptized. Many natives died from diseases brought by the Spanish, as well as from their cruel treatment. Natives who tried to escape from the missions were caught and punished. The Spanish occupation of native lands destroyed the way of life the native people had existed for thousands of years. The Spanish government gave land grants in Alta, California. The land grants gave the right to Spanish settlers to occupy the land and grazing rights for cattle, but the land remained the property of the Spanish crown. Ranchos were often thousands of acres of land. During the Spanish period, the purpose of the ranchos was to raise livestock and provide food for the presidios of San Diego, Monterey, San Francisco, and Santa Barbara. After Mexican independence from Spain, the ranchos provided a livelihood for those people who owned and worked on the ranchos. Over the years, raising cattle and other livestock became the main activity in Alta California and created the rancho economy, the buying and selling of products made from cattle. Ranchero was a title given to people who had been loyal to Spain and had shown that they were able to successfully farm the land. The first rancheros were soldiers who had come to the region as early as 1769. Others were settlers whose families had come to Alta California in the 1770s with Juan Batista de Anza. Mary, we're still on the first slide. Did you mean to be advancing the slides yeah good god suzanne where are you this is crazy i apologize i don't know what to tell you mary if you would like i could uh yep. screen share 
Go oh, ahead. Yeah. Yep, go ahead. That was what we decided we could do in an emergency. So All please right. feel so free. If you want to unscreen share, I will share your presentation and then you can tell me when to advance it. Okay, so how do I unscreen share? Uh, 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 I can actually maybe do that for you as oh, well. Oh, stop sharing? Okay. Yes. I'll stop it. Apologize, you guys. This works great with third grades. <laughs> Okay, so we've done that one. Okay, give me a moment. You want me to go back to the very beginning? Where do you want me to go to? Uh, tell me which slide you would like to be on. Oh, well, what is the council? What would they like? Well, just if you could go through the slides that we, we know what you said, just go through the slides that bring one by one to bring us. Okay, to so stay there, in. Suzanne. Okay, so here we are in the late 1700s. These are the 21 California missions that were built up the coast of California. And the, uh, the natives were baptized into the Catholic Church because they were considered heathens. So a lot of them, 81,000 natives were baptized. Um, many natives died at the missions because the Spanish had brought diseases and also the natives had been treated cruelly. So the Spanish occupation destroyed the way of life of the native people, which had existed for thousands of years. Okay, Suzanne. The Spanish government gave land grants in Alta California. The land grants gave the right to Spanish settlers to occupy the land and grazing rights for cattle, but the land remained the property of the Spanish crown. Ranchos were often thousands of acres, okay? During the Spanish period, the purpose of the ranchos was to raise livestock and provide food for the presidios or military forts of San Diego, Monterey, San Francisco, and Santa Barbara. After Mexican independence from Spain, the ranchos provided a livelihood for the people who owned and worked on the ranchos. Over the years, Raising cattle and other livestock became the main activity in Alta California and created the rancho economy, the buying and selling of products made from cattle. Okay. Ranchero was a title given to people who had been loyal to Spain and had shown that they were able to successfully farm the land. The first rancheros were soldiers who had come to the region as early as 1769. Others were settlers whose families had come to Alta California in the 1770s. After Mexican independence, they called themselves Californios because they felt closely connected to the land of California. Okay. Besides meat, cattle provided hides that could be converted into many products. Leather goods such as saddles and ropes were very important for the frontier life in Alta California. The dried hides were loaded into carts and taken to ports to meet sailing ships. Okay, after, they, after the hides were dried, they were folded and stored. Hides were, the ships would take hides to be sold in cities like Boston, New York, and Philadelphia to make shoes, boots, belts, and other leather articles. Besides meat and hides, fat from the cattle was melted into tallow for making soap and candles. Because hides and tallow were so valuable, the hide and tallow trade became a very important part of the rancho economy. In 1821, Mexican won its independence from Spain and the land came under the control of the Mexican government and the Californios were given ownership of the land. New laws were passed that allowed foreigners to acquire land, but the laws favored Mexican citizens. In 1833, the Mexican government secularized all the missions and took away the land from the Catholic Church. It was mainly the Californios who requested lands under the new laws. Although the native people had been promised that their lands would be returned to them, only a small number of Bay Area tribes ever received land, but later lost it to the new American settlers through lawsuits. 
Each rancho required a staff of workers to operate it. Native Indians maintained the household, cleaning, sewing, and working in the kitchens. Depending on the types of crops grown on the rancho, there were workers in the vineyards and orchards and in the fields where corn and wheat were grown. Although life on the rancho involved much hard work, there was also time for entertaining and socializing. Rancho dwellers enjoyed singing, dancing, playing cards, and telling stories. A very popular form of entertainment was the Fandango, a dance with its origins in Spain. In Alta California and Mexico, the word Fandango could also refer to a party where people danced together. Men and women would dress in their finest clothes to dance all sorts of dances, including the Jota Vieja and the Contradanza. Wealthy rancho families often organized fandangos that would last late into the night. In the beginning, most rancho houses were simple huts of earth, grass, and branches and reeds. As the ranchos grew, their owners built homes of adobe or wood. These homes were low one-story buildings, though larger and wealthier families would sometimes build two-story buildings. Most homes had an inner patio or courtyard where family activities would take place, as well as an outdoor kitchen for preparing and cooking meals. The Alta California Rancho Houses would later inspire the home style throughout the Western United States known as the Ranch Style House. Over a period of nearly 60 years, the Spanish and Mexican governments made about 500 land grants for ranchos in California. Of these, only about 30 were during the Spanish period, 1769 to 1822, while most came about during the Mexican era, 1822 to 1848. Some women also received land grants. One of, the, one of the adobes built in the La Mirinda area was the Joaquin, the Moraga adobe of Joaquin Moraga, built in 1841 on the Rancho de los Palos, Colorados. The restoration of this adobe is currently taking place to return it to what it looked like in the past. The Bernal adobe may have been built by Candelario Valencia when he was the owner of Rancho Acalanes. When Elam Brown purchased Rancho Acalanes in 1846, he became the owner of this building. He sold this piece of land with the adobe on it to Peter Thompson, a blacksmith in 1880. The building which was located on Happy Valley Road was badly damaged in the earthquake of 1906 and was torn down. The era of the California ranchos ended shortly after the Mexican-American War in 1848 and after the gold rush in 49, which had brought many new people to California. When California became part of the United States in 1850, rancho owners needed to prove to the United States government that the land belonged to them. They had to hire lawyers to defend their property and ended up having to sell their land to pay these expenses that most could not afford. By the end of the 1860s, most of the ranchos in California had been broken up and sold to new owners. All right, stay tuned next week, next time for the Pioneers, hopefully in a better format. All right, well, thank you very much. Uh, does any uh, member of the council have a question for Mary? Then I'm gonna open it to the public too for questions or comments, so. Any uh, any questions on what you've heard? All right, City Clerk Robbins, can you see if any any member of the public has a question for Mary? Certainly. If any member of the public would like to ask a question on item 7A and Mary McCoster, please raise your virtual hand now. The icon is at the bottom of your screen. Mayor, there are no hands raised. All right. Well, Mary, thank you again. We really appreciate you doing this, and we look forward uh, two weeks to see you uh, in person. Yes, and then we will just avoid all this technical stuff. Yeah. Sorry. Can't figure out why. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks for Great having presentation. me. Thanks, Mary. Bye.